when you bring up the topic of networking, people cringe, right? It's like you hear networking, you think you're you're in this in this networking event, you're wearing a label, and you're like, "Hi, Jack Kelly, damn glad to meet you." And then you launch into a spiel about who you are, what you're doing, and why you're so awesome, and why that other person should help you. It's very uncomfortable, right? You think it's kind of icky, where you feel it's. It's one of those things where you have to do, but it's pretentious, it's obnoxious, it's, it's, it's pushing people to help you that don't want to help you. But here's the deal, here's the thing. If you're looking for a job, you're looking to advance your career, you're in between roles, networking, we should have a different name for networking because I think it just has that connotation to it. So I, I don't know of another name, so I'll just say networking. You have to network particularly in this pandemic time. You're not going to the office. You're not interacting with people. You're not seeing people. You're not going out for lunches. You're not going out for dinners. You're not going to bar after work. You're not seeing social events. You may not be going to your local church or temple or synagogue or mosque, what have you. You're not doing these events you would go to do. Your kids probably aren't playing as many sports, so you're not going to be on the sidelines. So a lot of things that you would ordinarily interact with people and be able to to kind of get job leads share with people what's going on you've lost that you know we're literally in your home in our homes very few of us are back to the office and if you are it's low capacity we're not going out and meeting a lot of people so it really becomes hard to get out that you're looking for a job so if you're networking if you're looking for a job you're in between jobs Here's, here's, what, here's what I would suggest you do. Put aside any preconceived notions about networking. Look at it this way. The way things are now, there's so many people who are out of work. Millions of people are out of work. Millions more have fallen off the radar of the government data that, that are, are, are out of work. So the numbers uh, for employment, in my opinion, are probably like 14, 15, maybe even 20% especially if you start including people who are underemployed and people who are forced into gig economy, not by choice, and people who took jobs, so it looks like they have jobs, but they really took it for the health benefits, but they may be working at Home Depot or Walmart. Now, there's anything wrong with that, but you know, they were a white collar, high level professional, but can't get a job that's suitable, so they need something for their family to have health coverage. So it's, it's a tough environment. If a company posts a job, they're getting inundated with resumes. Imagine how many resumes each company gets when they post a job with so many people out of work. Especially, it's not as if when people post a resume, not everybody, but a lot of people will post it for everything because it's easy to do. You go on LinkedIn, they have that easy apply, and you can just knock it out. You're on your phone, you have you know, the, the, the career sections from company sites. You have all these job aggregation sites. You have all these niche sites. So it's so easy to get it. And just send your resume, send your resume, send your resume. So these companies are, are overwhelmed with a tidal wave of resumes. People will, will say, oh, the ATS systems, the applicant tracking systems, the robots are standing in your way. It's not really standing in your way. It's just there's such a voluminous amount of resumes that when the humans actually look at it, how much can they do in one day and how much can they get back to you? So what ends up happening, you're filling out all these applications, taking so much time. And why you can't have a universal application to make it easy is crazy. So you have to fill out for each company you're spending 10, 15, 20 minutes, a half hour, an hour. Then they say to put your resume on too, where why couldn't I just send my resume? You don't hear back. You send more resumes, you don't hear back. So the way things are, it's very hard to do the traditional way of looking for a job. The traditional way pre-COVID would be, hey, it's a good, it's a relatively good job market. Employment is either what it was previously at an all-time high or pretty good. So that companies needed people. They would reach out to job seekers, hey, we need you. You'd have friends, family, relatives, alumni, people of different affinity organizations that you share with them, religious groups, neighborhood groups, whatever the case may be, who if you let them know you were looking, could keep an eye out and would give you leads. Or even if you're not looking, they would hit you up because there's a robust market. 
and you have that human interaction. Now, there are less jobs, there are higher freezes, there's downsizings. When people are looking, there's so many that they're setting their resumes, whether they're appropriate or not. And in a way, you want to say, hey, stop sending resumes for jobs you're not good for because they're not going to look at you. But then you realize, hey, some people are really desperate and they're just flailing, trying everything they can do just to get a job. So it's hard to blame them. But it does clog up the works that if there's a good resume, after looking at 100 ones that don't make sense, the eyes of the people re reviewing are getting blurry. So the, the, you know, the, the interpersonal leads aren't, they're not coming as much. So many people have told me over the years, oh yeah, I'd never use recruiters because people know me and they'll reach out to me. Or I find a buddy, another buddy at a firm will say, hey, we have an opening and they'll hit me up. It doesn't happen as much anymore. Sending resumes, getting response doesn't happen anymore. So one way to fight back against it is to really have a campaign to get yourself out there and network. Now, best case scenario, what you should do is start networking before you need it. You don't want to start right away when you lost your job and scramble. So if, if you're in the space where you're currently working, but you're worried, then start now. If you are in between, hopefully you have been cultivating a network. If not, all right, you got to scramble a little bit. The key is this. You want to make sure that the word gets out. You're in between roles and you want a job. It's hard to do. You have to put your ego aside. It's uncomfortable. It's frustrating. You don't want to tell people your business. You're embarrassed. You feel a little shame. You shouldn't because there's so many people going through it, but you do. It's, it's, it's human nature. You, you feel, you feel your, your, your job, your career is so tied up with who you are as a person, when you don't have it, you feel a sense of loss. And you, you don't want to share that. In our society, think about it. We always want to share. How are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm doing fantastic. Kids are doing great. Everyone's great. You look at Instagram, everyone's having a great life. But the reality, we know that's not true. That's not happening. Some are, but most aren't. So you don't want to go out there and say, yeah, I lost my job. Can you help me? It's awkward. It's uncomfortable. So what ends up happening, people pull back. So instead of going out there and, and, and telling people, and is brave to do so, hey, I, I'm in between roles, can you help me? They pull back and don't say anything. They don't do anything. They kind of hide under the covers, literally and figuratively, because they just don't want to admit that you're, you're out of work. It's hard to admit for a lot of people. So the first thing you have to do is come to terms, hey, either A, <clears throat> I lost my job and that happens and that's literally happened to millions of Americans, let alone how many millions across the whole world that are going through this. It happens. It's okay to show a little, I don't even want to say weakness, just show, be authentic of what's happening. Admit that this happened and even if you didn't lose your job but you're worried about it, you have to let people know. You let your family, friends, coworkers, former coworkers, former colleagues, people you've worked with 10 years ago, alumni, kids you grew up with, whoever it is, you set it on a plan to make sure they're aware of that you're out of work and you need help and you need a job and here's what you have to offer. Here's what you, because a lot of times you're going to have friends and you really don't know what they do. You don't understand what they do and you would have no clue what they want to do next. So you want to be clear. Here's my job. Here's what I've done. Here's what I'm looking to do. And here are the companies I want. So then you can have people kind of working on your behalf who could help you. Now, will everybody help you? No, no. If you, if you talk to 10 people, two might be, absolutely, I'm there for you, I'm gonna help. Two, will like, oh, I gotta go, sorry. And then in between, you get a little mixture. But if you keep talking to another 10, another 10, another 10, if you keep getting those two who will help, that's great. And then the middle ground, if you could capture a few of those, before you know it, you have a good group of people. Also, you want to find mutually benefiting relationships. You don't want it to be all about help me, help me, help me. You want to go into it saying, how can you help them as well? You want to make it where, all right, maybe they're working, everything's fine, but maybe there is a way you could help. Maybe there's a way you can give back. Or sometimes at least offering, by just offering people appreciate it. So it's not as if 
you're just taking. You're wanting to give as well. And that's why I would say you start early if possible. Because you start early, you could reach out to people and say, hey, we're going through a tough time in this pandemic. Anything I could do for you, anything I could help you, anything you need. So best case, you would have laid the groundwork for people knowing that you're there for them. So now when you're saying, hey, can you help me? When you say, can you help me? They're going to feel a little guilt that they should because you offered or they would be happy to because you offered to help them. In practical terms, you get in touch with all these people to know, let them know what you're doing. Send them your resume, tell them to take a look at your LinkedIn profile, send the link for the LinkedIn profile, have conversations with them, have a Zoom call with them, meet with them. If you want to meet with them, I don't know how you feel about that in COVID, uh, but you want to make sure they get who you are, what you're about, what you've done, what you're looking to do so they could help you. Because if they don't really know it, they're not going to try because they don't want to embarrass themselves and say, hey, I have a guy who's looking. What does he do? I'm not really sure. How's that going to help? So you want to make it where they could, you could give them your elevator pitch so that when they speak to people who can maybe pull some strings, they could recite your elevator pitch. There's a whole new crop of these Zoom meetup type calls where they have a lot of different job seekers together. You might have career coaches, career experts, resume writers, what have you, and they'll talk about it. And that's good, that's healthy. You should join as many as possible because you may get some good tips on how to market yourself, how to get out there, how to find the jobs you want. You can network with these other people. Some may be in different industries. It might not be helpful. Some might be in the same industries. Maybe you could learn some interviewing techniques, resume techniques, LinkedIn techniques. You don't know where that next, you don't know where that job lead is going to come from. So you want to maximize your exposure. You don't want to pull back because you feel uncomfortable. You want to move forward. You want to get out there. You want to share. So the more people you share with them, the more help. So you go on these calls. You go on these, you know, online Zoom type meetup, we meet up calls so that you get to know more people and more people can help you out. And you offer to help those people as well. A good way to get out there and network is through LinkedIn. Here's what you would do. Here's what I would suggest you do if you haven't already. Find the kind of companies you want to work for. Let's just start and make it easy. Let's say there are five great, let's say ten, five to 10 companies that you feel you would love to work for. Look at those five and 10 companies, then find people who would be HR, talent acquisition, hiring managers, peers, decision makers, people you know, people you think you know someone who knows them, send out invitations. Will everybody accept? No, but you send a lot. You send out, you have 10, up to 10 companies. That, and this is, could be more, I'm just giving round number. But if you send it to 10 companies and each one you have now 20 people you're targeting, if half of them accept, okay, you got a good start. Then when they post things, like you can start small, like what they post, like, like, okay. Then maybe you give, um, if they post something, you give an answer, an intelligently well thought out answer. If someone else posts, you do the same thing. Then we feel a little bit more confident post yourself some original content. It doesn't have to be a whole article. It doesn't have to be a novel. It doesn't have to be brilliant, but you could post in different ways, letting, you, letting people know that you're looking. You could have that, that banner open to work, but if you do, you want to say, here's what I'm looking for. Here's the type of job I want. Here's my responsibilities, my background, my achievements and what I want to do next and why I would be appropriate for such and such jobs with such and such companies. And that's what you would do too when you post. A lot of people post on LinkedIn and they think they're networking. They'll post these affirmational quotes, these positive, uh, you know, positive motivational quotes with nice pictures, which is great and it gets attention for sure. But if that's the only strategy, as much as you look at the person's profile, you're taking you're hoping that someone's going to take a look at it, then go to your profile and then look at your profile, think of what you're doing and then figure out what you want to do and how they could help. You could post that and it's kind of cool. 
But I would suggest you post more of, here's who I am, here's the position I'm in, here's what I'm looking to do next, here's how you could help me do it. So that people could say, oh, all right, I get it. And if I come across a job that fits within what that person's looking for, I could gladly hit them up. And you need to do it on a consistent basis. You can't just post once and forget about it. You want to post on a regular basis so people start seeing you. The crazy thing is, I should say crazy, the weird thing is with these algorithms, whether it's LinkedIn, Facebook, you, you got to game it. Because if you post something, it doesn't mean everybody in your network is going to see it. They dribble it out. As I understand it, they'll dribble it out to a few, and a few people see it and then comment on do it, then they'll send it out again to them. Doesn't mean it's going to go out to everyone. So you want to be consistent where you're sending it out. And LinkedIn prizes people who communicate more, not just a like, but have more of a dialogue. And then you could at people as well. So when you're in your, if you could write something, hey, and you could be authentic too. You could also share your experiences searching for a job. You don't want to make it kind of a sad sack, but tell them what you're going through, what you're finding, some of your successes, some of your victories. So people could go, oh, all right. You, know, you don't want them to feel sorry for you, but you say, hey, this person's really aggressive looking. Then you could post things that, let's say you're an expert in your field or to position yourself as an expert in the field. So then you could post different things that are happening within your area. A new development, a new, let's say you're in the pharmaceutical space, the hot area with COVID, right? So maybe you're in that space. So you could post, hey, this new drug, this might be a great vaccine, here's why. Do, 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 and you, you, you link it to some really great study, what have you. Or, hey, this, this, this new study seems promising, and so on. So then, after a while, people start saying, wow, this person is really an expert. And because you're in between jobs, you can have more time, so you could probably do more research about it. So then, you become like a go-to person. You've already connected with a whole bunch of people in this space. Now, what happens is that the ones who didn't accept your LinkedIn may have noticed you because other people liked you that were connected and then they will later on they'll go back to their emails within they'll go back to their LinkedIn emails and say wait all right let, let me accept it now and then you start getting attention you start getting notice when a job comes up they're gonna say you know what there's this guy who keeps posting about clinical trials and he seems really well in tune with biotech and new developments within the pharmaceutical industry yeah, you know, why don't you give him a call? You know, it sounds like, you know, he, she is really invested in this space. It's worthwhile because you've created an aura about yourself that you're an expert in this area. You know about it. You are looking for a job. So if there's a recruiter, if there's a hiring manager, an HR person, they'll take a look. Now, is it perfect? No. But these are, you have to try everything. You have to find ways to reach out. There's one person I spoke to, what his approach, he would contact people he's dealt with, co-workers, former co-workers, business associates, and just say, hey, you want to have a you know, cup of coffee on a Zoom call? And he'd make his business every, every day, maybe three, four, five Zoom calls. And he wouldn't start with, hey, I need a job, but get in a dialogue, how's it going, what have you, because people are working from home, they're stuck at home, they're looking for, they, they've watched everything on Netflix, and they don't know what else to do. So they're up for a call, and by doing that, Let's say five a day, 20, you know, let's say, let's say even it's only 20 a week you end up speaking to. That's every week for a few weeks, it adds up. So it's a numbers game. So maybe one of those people on the call that you had a call with is going to know somebody who's looking. Hit up recruiters. Find recruiters who specialize in your space. Get on their radar. Have one-on-one -on -one Zoom call type meetings with them. Let them know who you are, what you're about, why you, you, know, why you would be great for certain jobs and have them start looking for you as well. Hit up different HR people at different companies. Start getting more aggressive. Hit up people who are managers in the groups that you would want to work for. You want to really take control of it. I know it's really uncomfortable to do because you don't want to be in the position where you're twisting, twisting arms, pressuring people to help you, sharing your own personal story. A lot of people are very uncomfortable with it, and I can't blame you, but in this environment where the traditional means of finding a job are not as easy anymore. As I mentioned, you send resumes, everybody's sending resumes. You're sending applications, everyone's sending applications. 
you have to find a way to make yourself known. Another way to network, which is a little pushy, I admit it. Now we talked about those 10 companies. Pick out a few people who maybe you know, kind of, or you know someone who knows someone. And then either you reach out directly and ask for the help, or if you know someone, ask them, hey, I see that you're connected with so-and-so. Can you let them know that I'm looking, I see that they have some jobs on their corporate side, I'd be good for this particular job. Would you mind sharing and telling them about that and maybe they could bring it to the right person? Once again, it's hard. It's hard because people aren't, especially if you're an introvert and you don't feel comfortable reaching out and asking for favors or cajoling people and pushing, but these are difficult times. And when they're difficult times, you have to do things that you may not be comfortable with. Now, if you're an extrovert, for this not so bad because you like talking to people, you love talking to people, you feed off of it, so you love schmoozing. For those, this is actually a good environment. So for those, this gives you an excuse to call people and chat them up and talk to them and kibitz and schmooze and talk and, and hopefully they'll get a lead. So if you are extroverted and you enjoy talking, this is a great time. I, I shouldn't say it's a great time. It's not, you know what I'm talking about. It's a time where those skills will come in handy because you don't, ha not only do you have no qualms about calling up strangers and talking, you kind of like that. Now, if you're an introvert, it's going to be harder, but you have to push yourself. So the whole thing is this. We're in a very different job market where the usual things don't work. So you have to be creative. You have to think out of the box. And one of the ways is whereas the natural tendency is to pull back. Don't tell people what's going on because you feel uncomfortable. You feel embarrassed. There's nothing to feel uncomfortable about. There's nothing to be embarrassed millions of people are in the same boat. It's happening to so many people. And if it's not happening to one person, it's happening to someone in their family or one of their friends. Take the opposite. Put, put yourself out there. Yes, you'll be a little vulnerable, but put yourself out there. You want to tap into whoever you feel could help you point you in the right direction. And it's a little bit of a numbers game. The more people you reach out to, the more chances of success you have. Now, you don't want to go completely where you're just talking to some random stranger on the street, but you want to start at least with people you feel there's a good likelihood that they have connections within the world that you're in. And you have to go for it. Go on any online meeting. As I mentioned, go on LinkedIn, find people within your space send them invites, comment on their things, put original content on there, make yourself look like you're the expert in the space so when people have jobs, they're gonna think of you, recruiters will see you. Get on all these online, you know, Zoom type, we meet up type calls so that you can meet new people who can learn new tricks or tr tricks of the trade of, of, of interviewing, some tips about interviewing. Maybe there are people on there who are in your field too so you can kind of brainstorm together and keep trying. Now, you don't, this doesn't have to be the only thing you do, but this is a big part. This, along with working with recruiters, working on your elevator pitch, working on your resume, working on your LinkedIn profile, the networking is, is a big piece in this kind of environment that you get yourself out there. So put, try, try, and, and, and you hear my voice, I, I don't wanna push you too much about it because I do know it's uncomfortable for a lot of people to do. It's, 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 it's very uncomfortable to show vulnerability that you're in between roles, you lost your job, you feel bad about it, you feel ashamed about it, you, lose, you, you feel your self-esteem, your self-confidence is eroding a little bit. But if you don't move forward, it's gonna get worse because then more time is gonna go by and you're gonna feel worse and worse about it. So, so take the plunge, start small, get, your, get known, get out there, meet people, have people get to know you, ask people to help you out and keep trying. You have nothing to lose. The worst that people say is, no, I can't help you. I don't know. So that's the worst, right? That's not so bad. Hey, sorry, I don't have any connection. Okay. But the next one might, or the next one, and the next one. And all you need, all you need is that one, two, or three people who have the right connection to put you in front of the right person at the right time, 
And that's it. And you get the lead, you get the interview, you get the job, and you don't have to worry about networking for a while. Then after you get the job, you pay it forward, and then you get to everyone in your network, how can I help you? What can I do? What can I do to make you feel better? How can I help? What leads? Where can I point you in the right direction? And then you're building up your network even more for the next time if this happens. Hopefully it doesn't happen, but if it does, now you're prepared.